Bring them out, bring them out. Bring them out, bring them out. Bring them out, bring them out. Bring them out. All right, I still got my little blade that I got personally when I went to Africa. Well, one of them. I brought back many of them. But I just found this one. I'm feeling real good about it. So I just wanted to share it with you. What's up, Mr. Leroy Thornton? The multi-talented Thundering Thornton. How you doing today, sir? All right, for uh, those that don't know, I am on the 21. This is the 20th day of my fast, right? And at this point, I'm not drinking water. Or, you know what I'm saying? So it's like for today and the rest of tomorrow. Uh, my fast ends tomorrow at 9 p.m. And I'm struggling through. Um, today's show, oh man, um, I'm just, I'm still growing, man. You see, I'm still, I'm still up here trying to do the thing on Facebook, trying to educate. I'm still doing me. Um, on today's YouTube show, we're going to talk about um, not whether you should drink or not drink while you're eating, right? Because we know that drinking and eating together is something a lot of us do. But we're going to look at the pros and cons of it. And also, I'm going to share some information that I got from the studies that I've been doing over the fast. I'm going to share some of the books that I've been <coughs> reading. Um, I got an important, um, uh, um, uh, important idea from this book called Folk Tales, African Folk Tales, where they talk about how black folks look and discuss things. So I'm going to read something from that. I'm going to share some of the books that I've been going over while I've been on the fast. I reacquainted myself with the library because I had a little bit of time off. So what we're going to do today, of course, is we are going to toast the ancestor, um, the ancestors as well as the creator. Um, those out there, that um well i get why do i gotta do i gotta press invite invite brian to be a guest invite um um invite i don't i this 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 invite thing is new i'm gonna invite brother leroy all right so i got um leroy thornton brian Tyner, welcome. Asa Abdur, Rashid. All right, so I'm brewing some more of that um, ambrosia, man. So if you want to place your order, you need to place it. You know what I'm saying? Um, like I said, going to put a little something down so that you can get it when, it when I got it, man. All right, so now y'all know we toast the ancestors here, right? Of course, I do my little rants and stuff like that. But, um... Dude, I am feeling extremely good right now. It's, it's not like I get up and run to 10 miles, you know what I'm saying, or or, or, or wrestle or bear or something like that. But fasting is, um, one, you get to experience your body um, at all phases because at one minute my, my energy was super high, um, then another minute my energy is super low, um, then if I step outside my cycle, my whole day is off. Like yesterday, I was extremely tired. It took me a second to figure out, but I had to take the advice of one of my elders, backtrack. I backtracked to where I didn't go to bed the um, night before until like 12 o'clock. Woke up at 3.30, got up, did the toast, did everything, tried to take a nap. And it did, the whole day, I was just grumpy. And my, my kids caught hell, my daughters caught hell, because I fell out my system. And one of the things that I'm learning on this fast is that it's important that we maintain our systems. Now, also with this fast, what I'm learning is that we have an opportunity to, in a sense, resurrect ourselves, because fasting is um, a symbolic death. Right, and it prepares us for death because we all gonna die, right? And I felt like an old man. I felt like I was my body was too heavy for me. I was carrying something heavier. So I learned 
and I, or I was prepared for what's coming in the future. So if I start taking care, better care of myself now, I could prolong my health, right? So I have a hop. When you take a fast, you have an opportunity to reset your body and then start preparing yourself, in a sense, for a better life. So as y'all see, um, those that's been following, dude, the stuff that's popping off and the stuff that I'm learning is just ridiculous. Like, for example, when I say that it's possible, right, G&J's, G&J that ambrosia's goal is to end all gut-related diseases within our tribe. Period. Period. It's a very doable thing after doing the studies. After we looking at uh, books like Gut Health, you know what I'm saying, and, and researching information on the microbiome, right? After finding out about dehydration, after finding out about the processed food, after finding out about the fluoride, it is very possible that we can end all gut-related diseases. And Brother Hatim, what are gut-related diseases? Damn near every disease that you can name, from ADHD to uh, uh, diabetes um, to all, all the autoimmune diseases. You know what I'm saying? Most of that is related to your gut health. And you not doing not one or two things. One, you're not breathing right. Two, you're not drinking right. Three, you're not eating right. Four, you're not moving right. There's culturally appropriate ways to do everything. And we got to make sure we know this, right? Boom. So we're going to talk about a little bit of that on the YouTube. But now let's get to the toast. I thought my ladies was going to join me. As y'all see, they went out and they got their own little glasses. You know what I'm saying? That's how serious they take it, right? You know, my little babies make me mad sometimes, but sometimes... They make me so joyous, but I guess that's part of being a father, right? So, I can't drink today, but y'all could drink. And as usual, we started off with y'all taking some water. So I need everybody that's out there, get you a glass, because we grown folks. Get you a glass and start your day off with a shot of water. You know what I'm saying? Get you some water. Come on now. Drink your water, because I'll be drinking with you um, on Emoja, Emoja morning, right? I'll be drinking with you once again. Now, every morning I won't have that Ambrosia because I got this batch brewing, but I do have a little machine to make um, a help drink every morning. Now, the rules are very simple. You start your day off with water, right? You start it off. Get you some water. I'm doing spring water at this point in time, right? Um, then you get you a health drink. So then when we make the toast to the ancestors, we toast with a health drink. If you ain't got nothing else, you got some pure water, that's a health drink, all right? So now, um, I got a little uh, bullet in here, so I'll be able to mix some drinks, and we're going to be also during... Um, the next few weeks, I'm going to be sharing with y'all um, different ways of eating breakfast, right? Because my grandparents used to eat, like, uh, tomatoes, um, tomatoes and grits and, um, and, and different stuff. We need to start switching it up, family. You know what I'm saying? We really need to start looking at different ways of eating, different ways of, of getting um, the information into our gut into our second brain, right? Because that's what that's where your gut is. But drink your water. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. Drink your water. Now, get your health drink together. We're about to do our toast. First, call it on the Creator by whatever name you choose to call that Creator. We call that great power into us, even though we know it's already here. We call it around us. And we... I start my day off every day with 16 ounces, but what's the health drink? A health drink is a tea, um, a healthy tea. Um, uh, you can make yourself a smoothie. Um, I, I make a drink called That Ambrosia, which is basically a, a kombucha. Um, do whatever, anything, anything that's not conventional, right? Um, that 
doesn't contain a lot of sugar, um, processed sugars, you know what I'm saying, that helps you feel good. That's a health drink, right? Because we want to start our day off with the water, and then we want to start our day off with, with something that energizes us and moves us towards our purpose in that day, all right? Uh, shouts out to Miss Aisha Essex. I see you. All right, so we continue with the Creator, and we toast that Creator, that great force that created the entire universe by whatever name you choose to call that Creator. Go around there, Gina. Go in the kitchen, get you something to eat. All right, one of my babies is up. So um, we toast and we say Ashe. From there, we move to our personal ancestors, and like I say, uh, you say, Brother Leroy says. I got it. I do a smooth. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about, man. I mean, it's like a lot of us, we already vibing in this. A lot of us, we already doing this, right? The only thing I'm throwing in there is salute your ancestors. You know what I'm saying? Those individuals that came before you, those grandmothers, those grandfathers, those mothers, those fathers, those aunts, those uncles, those cousins, right? Those friends, those nieces and those nephews that made that transition before you. We want to salute, salute those individuals that made it possible for us to exist, that made us, that helped form our personality, that helped form who we are, that helped protect it, protected us um, during the times when we couldn't protect ourselves, those that stood up for us when we couldn't stand up for ourselves, those that walked for us when we couldn't walk. We want to raise our glass and we want to thank those people, those personal people in our lives. Because usually when people pour in libations, they're pouring libations for the big names. No, we don't want to pour libations for the big names. We want to pour the libations for the big names in our families. We want to lift the glasses, right? We want to have a family reunion every day. You know what I'm saying? So we ask our ancestors to come and chill with us, right? And I want y'all to start watching what start happening to your life when you start saluting your personal ancestors on a daily basis. It don't have to be at the earliest morning like I do it during um, Omoja through Nia. You know what I'm saying? You get up and do it when you are able to get up and do it. But lift up your glass and salute your family. Right? Salute your family. You'd be surprised what type of power is waiting to, to, to come through the door and help you. Right? So we lift up our glass. Now I'm gonna go down my family line. If anybody got any family line that they want to send, they want want me to shout out. By all means, put it up there, right? So I can start with Miles Brown, Miss Ann, Robert and Texana Davis, Herman Brown Senior, Rosalie Tilly, George and William Walton, Christopher and Fanny Gasson, Aunt Lena, Uncle Chris. Um, Geneva Brown. Cleveland Brown, Margaret Ellis, Wash Ellis, Herman Brown Sr., Cecil Ellis, Alvaro Brown, Gina, um, Gina Gaines, uh, Barbara Twiggs, Jamon Jones, Jeremiah Tappan, John Fillard, Montague Pittman L., um, Normal X, Sepet Ma Ra. Elder Donaldson, Elder, Elder Harrison, Elder Elder Donaldson, Elder Harrison, Elder uh, Farmer, Elder Millie, um, Doctor uh, Doctor Marianne Williams, Tony Clark, Pastor Yusef Weston, uh, man, I can't think of no more. All right, those are my personal ancestors. Hopefully you got your glass up and you salute your personal ancestors as well. We toast them and we say our shade. From there we toast this moment because right now in this moment is our gift. What? I already did that. Thank you. My daughter's trying to remind me about my ancestors. See, your kids do what you do, all right? So be very careful what you do around your kids. Right? Um, right now is the moment where all your power lies. Today is Kaumba.
today is Kaumba. I got my cheat sheet. This is their creativity. Um, the modic principle is order. Um, the hermetic law is cause and effect. Male name is Kwame. Female name is Ama. Uh, yes, they. I know you. I, I I know you've been telling them that, but more of us need to start telling them that, Mister Thorne. You know that. You know what I'm saying? Because that's part of the issue. Not enough of us are telling our parents that. Because I mean, even though we think it would be common sense that your children gonna do what they see you do, a lot of us don't don't really um, deal with deal with the deal with that reality. A lot. I mean, a lot of a lot of people. Don't. What we would consider as common sense is no longer common sense. There is no common sense anymore, right? Because we have this disintegrated as a culture. Now, if we had a if we had a, a real culture, then we could be start. We could be talking about common sense amongst amongst black people, amongst black folk, right? Black folks in America. But we have no culture no more. It has totally. It, it has almost totally disintegrated, right? And we are we are hanging on to scraps, right? So now, uh, the biggest and the baddest, or the brightest and the, and the most beautifully colored, is 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 shaping the mind state of our our, our, our families, um, of 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 the people within our communities, and it's tearing everything up. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and literally. Literally, when crack, well, you know, heroin first, but when crack really hit, because crack allowed the, the wall that was kind of protecting us as a culture to actually totally disintegrate. Because in every culture, and a lot of people, and we don't want to accept this, but in every culture, you have a dark underground, right? You have a, 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 a seedy underground. If you don't believe me, Look at all the other cultures. Look at all the cultures. You have you have that that mafia type thing. You have those gangsters. You have those individuals that deal with the dark side of life. Every culture has this, right? But that part of the culture is very limited, right? And is very controlled, right? Um, uh, uh, Mr. Thornton, you are old enough to remember people being murdered and money being left in their pocket right you 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 are old enough to remember that there was a segment of the community that were known as hustlers that if you didn't know the right people you couldn't get involved with them so everybody couldn't get involved with them you know what i'm saying now what happened with crack, when crack came into community, this opened up and allowed the dark side, anybody was able to get into the dark side. All you had to do was have money. See, back in the day, it didn't matter whether or not you had money. You needed to know somebody, and there were certain rules that you followed to be in that world, right? But now that world got busted open when crack came into our community, right? So now with that happening, that caused a lot of other stuff to start dissolving. On top of that, we was already under attack, right? Our, our culture was already under attack, but crack was like the, the, the straw that broke the camel's back. And by that time, we hit the 80s, you know what I'm saying? Cocaine, crack, partying, everybody wanting to, to move away from us, from black folks and move into the suburbs and shit. The whole shit disintegrated. Now we got children. We, we got we got children of the dust, children of the corn, right now running around because they have no culture. They they come to school for them. They don't understand that, and, and you can't be mad at them. They don't understand that it's something bigger. You know what I'm saying? That they represent when they're at school, and you try to remind them. See, because I mean, really. If you say, man, do your, do your mom know how you act in school? They don't give a shit. You know what I'm saying? Do you, you know what I'm saying? You, you look at them, they don't care. 
I don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't care. Well, I, don't, I don't care. Right? And, and that population of individuals that don't care is growing. Why? Because that means that is the sign that the culture is totally disintegrated. And it's our job in this generation to bring the culture back. It's our job to recreate the parts of the culture that's missing. That's our job. Right? And it's hard. Why? Because people don't even understand the importance of culture. Right? It's just, you know, it's, it's, it's incredible to me how people don't even understand the importance of culture. They don't understand that it's culture that moves you into um, a, a, a happy existence. Right? It's culture that, that keeps you politically grounded. It's culture that helps maintain the loyalty of your politicians and your bankers. You know what I'm saying? It's culture from which your bankers come and, 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 and governs their, their actions. But if you don't have a culture, nobody is held responsible for anything. It's culture that gets teachers to truly invest themselves in your children. But if there's no culture, nobody's investing. I don't have to do that. Right? So, um, I'm sorry. I went off on that. I hope I finished the toast. Oh, no, I did. So now is your power. I'm sorry, man. Sometimes I go off. All right. Um, so we're going to toast our children, our children's children, on to infinity. So we lift up our glass for our children. We toast them now so that they can toast, they, to, toast us later. And we make sure that we understand that everything we do affects them. So we lift up our glass. And we toast our children. Last but not least, I toast each one of you. If there's any issue that any of you have out there that you want us to toast, just put it up. Put it up. Right? Just put it on the timeline. Because I got people all over the country, all over the country coming in later that look at this. You know what I'm saying? And once we start combining our energy, we get a like-minded group, we'll be able to really start affecting change when we lift up our glasses. I'm, try, I'm trying to get an army of people with glasses that's lifting up in the morning, toasting their ancestors. But I'm trying to tell you, family, one of, the, one of the most underused weapons that we have is our relation to our ancestors. Science says energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transformed. So this means that every individual that was ever with us in our lives is not going they just transformed into another form that energy is there all we have to do is know how to tap into it right we trust that the electricity work all we got to do is pay our electric electric bill but i'm on i challenge you every last one ask a scientist what is electricity nobody could give you a clear definition of what electricity is right it's a it is an energy form we know it's an energy form but what is it? Where does it come from? You know what I'm saying? Why does it work? Now, it don't matter why. It's just as long as it do, right? I'm trying to tell you that there's an ancestral force out there that we used to know how to harness, that we fell out of tune with, that now we need to get it together and get it back into it. So now, um, I'm going to toast. I can't drink. Ooh, y'all can drink up now. Man, that water look good. Damn. Right? I'm on day two. See now I went um I went I'm on today is day twenty. Um twenty days without food. First seven days I did juice. Second seven days I just did water ambrosia. Um the next four days after that I just did water. Now I'm at a point where I'm not doing anything. So this water show look good. So, um, Facebook, I'm gonna bid you adieu. I'm gonna get ready for my YouTube, um, my YouTube video, and I'm working on my new bread. Um, um, I, I will be hopefully be able to offer the community. You go ahead, Jenna. I will be able to offer the community um, some bread, some healthy bread. 
because it, it's, it bothered me that at one point in time bread was considered a staple of life but now when you look at a lot of um, health care uh, websites they talk about bread is poison you know what I'm saying how the hell did bread go from being the staple of life to being poison and then of course we look into it and the fermented process is not really being allowed to work all the way through so I figured I said let me try to experiment with some bread using that ambrosia because that ambrosia is uh, is is yeast and bacteria right that makes that ambrosia and I found out they got this dough called sourdough that you keep alive just like you keep the uh, scovia alive I said what so now I'm, I'm fermenting bread it's fermenting right now and right after I get done with doing this I'm going into the kitchen and I'm going to start making my first batch. First batch is going to be a sourdough, sourdough bread. Next batch is going to be a honey bun. And then I'm, I want to make a cheese sourdough bread. Right? I'm just, right now, you know, plus I'm real hungry. Right? I'm going to use, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, some of this is going to help me break my fast and shit. But I've been having fantasies about about creating different foods and shit right so i done stocked up i got I, shit i done stocked the kitchen up i'm ready to go right and i'm like family we can end all gut related disease there's no reason why uh diabetes is running rapid in our community there's no reason why adhd is running rapid in our community i mean well there is a reason we're doing culturally inappropriate shit we're eating culturally and appropriately, right? All of y'all out there, I got five of y'all on online right now, and it's going to be more later. Y'all really need to look into the African heritage diet. They have shown that you can improve your health by simply adding some culturally based foods to your diet. We all can't eat alike because we all are not alike. Yes, we all are humans, right? And and yes, yes, I, I hear y'all, right? I hear you universalists out there. Yes, we all are we all are human, but the, we all have a different relationship with the earth and with the food on the earth. All of us, right? This is why if you take somebody from another country, you drop them in another country and they just start eating that country's food, they're going to get sick. Black folks, we have been sick for over 400 years because we've been eating the wrong food. And I'm just saying, it's just a little tweaking. I ain't saying you can't go experiment on with the sushi. I'm not saying that you can't go experiment with the Italian. I'm not saying that you can't. But you're going to have to come back to those black eyed peas. You're going to have to come back to them yams, right? You're going to have to come back to that. you got to, you know what I'm saying? You're going to have to go on and start developing and, and start eating those greens again. Oh, it, it was worth some of our lives. Some of us are so stubborn, we're not going to change. You know what I'm saying? It's and, and 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 I'm cool with that, right? This is why in Giami Journey, I'm telling people, hey, dude, you gonna do what you gonna do? You gonna smoke? You know what I'm saying? Y'all gonna smoke? Y'all gonna drink? But the issue is, there's a way that you could do all that and be able to live a healthy life. See, because one of the things I want to erase out of our mindset is that we all got to go out in this world slow, a slow death, right? I don't want to go out like I, I, I see my grandfather. I know, hell no, right? I don't want to, I don't even believe that we have to, would you stop, would you stop? I don't believe that we even have to suffer on the way out of here. I'm saying that if we learn the four, right? We got the two, two, four self-help process where we guarantee, where we promise, we make a vow to ourselves, right? We make a vow to ourselves that we're going to spend two hours a day working on developing us every two hours, every, within every 24 hours, within every 24 hours, we spend twenty. We spend two hours working on us. I ain't talking about helping others. I'm talking about working on you. 
Next, four. We got the four, right? The four parts, the four things we need to live a healthy life. Breathing right, drinking right, eating right, moving right. Most of, a lot of us aren't breathing right. A lot of us are drinking the wrong shit. We're drinking inappropriately, drinking in culturally inappropriate shit. We're eating in culturally inappropriate stuff, and we're doing inappropriate movements, right? Oh, because we're universal. Got the five, five parts of our being. I ain't going to go into all that. So we got four, five, six, and seven. And I honestly believe that if we start practicing that shit, we start looking at it, and... Um, we start really looking at it and start studying it, family. We can live long and healthy lives and we can leave this planet in style. You know, there's there's stories of elders that, that just fade away. They they know when they're going and they just go. Right? They go dramatically, some of them go dramatically. Some of them go with style. Some of them go surrounded with their family. Right? So, um, let me go because my daughter is, is pulling on my leg up under the table. And uh, so, uh, I'm going to say peace, Facebook. I'm going to go pour this water on this plant. It's a libation. Sure wish I could throw, pour it down my throat. But I got another day. Man, I was, and it's a sweat lodge today. And I was thinking about going to the sweat lodge. But as dry, my, dry as my mouth feel right now, I'm not going to do it. But a sweat lodge show would be nice. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. If somebody in the family out there want to go to the sweat lodge, y'all might need to go and contact Brother out there. All right? So, hey. I'm out. Make sure you take the Nguza Saba Challenge. Go to gum.co forward slash Nguza Saba Challenge. Right? Those that are interested in, in supporting the journey and getting that ambrosia, go to gum.co forward slash that ambrosia and you can put in a uh, pre order. I would suggest putting in pre orders because now I got people that's putting in pre orders. So they get the uh, they get the stuff first. Uh, my son, my phone was searching, but did you talk about that drinking with the food? Um, that will happen on my YouTube channel, right? You know, I start off the day with the toast on Facebook, and then I I post that up on YouTube. All right. So, um, but just put in um, because there's many articles on it, right? The benefits and the other stuff so uh subscribe to the youtube channel um oh gina the gina g project will be posting up sometime later on today they went to the farm yesterday and they had a good time so this is a show for the kids so if you have kids children that you want to you want to watch, want them to watch something lightly entertaining um my daughters put together a show um i helped them out a little bit well, I helped him a lot out with a lot with this one because I had to carry the camera. But um, I did a show. Um, Mr. Thornton, you ought to think about getting your kids a YouTube show. You know what I'm saying? All of all of y'all that have kids, even in teenage age, we need to start start learning how to use this media so we can communicate our ideas. All right. So with that, I am out. <laughs>